And then I said, hey, pal, that ain't strudel. But it was still glazed. See? The whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. I, I made sure that Tegan was drinking when I said that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're good. <laughs> we haven't even two minutes. We haven't even <laughs> on a minute yet. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very, very, very much for tuning in once again to your pals at the American Sci-Fi Classics Track. Other people have a convention once a year. Bro, we just do this all year round. And now you can see our beautiful faces. Yes. We keep the party going all year long. The whole time, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, we're discussing <laughs> permissible mullets. And oh. <laughs> who better <laughs> to have on board for that than, first of all, my co-director, Gary Mitchell. And you can find me here on the Twitter. Okay, I'm going to try I, to do I, it. Oh, One of I these, did. yeah, we're on Facebook fourth one of these you think i'd know how to do this by now i did it i did it correctly wait, wait, wait. no it's this finger that finger yeah. does it wait, wait, ah, yeah yeah i got it got it boom <laughs> and our mullet expert <laughs> our chief mulletologist if you will <laughs> ladies and gentlemen uh please welcome back to our awesome designated fun zone Miss Tegan Hendrickson. Hey, everybody. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Just just because. Gosh. All right. Cool. It's been a long day. All right. So, uh, so I, I guess we're I guess we're doing this. Yeah. So <laughs> All right. I, I would kind of like to start with how did this whole topic even start? Let's do that. Honestly, this I, is kind of a legendary panel of the classic I track. Honestly, <laughs> don't really no it probably started when i just sort of went off on mullets once and then it just became like this thing where we're like we should do a panel about mullets and I then i was like it. okay then i guess i'm gonna make a powerpoint presentation <laughs> like and, that, yeah. is, that's how so many panels start <laughs> at dragon con they usually start the year before mm -hmm. when mm -hmm. we're um um mid panel on a completely different topic. And uh, then we really, if you want to know what we're going to do in, a, in any particular year, just be there the previous year and clues and hints will be all over the place. But this one, we ended up doing this one. Is that was this one of the eight thirty a.m. No, it was one of the opposite the parade panels. There it is, mm -hmm. ten a.m. And we awesome. and we ended up managing to get like a lot of people. Like it became a thing. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it, it was because... it was big enough that we actually did two mullet panel to the mulleting. What we yeah yeah that? I have yeah I have that one. So if if this goes well, uh, we can always do more mullets. Awesome, <laughs> awesome, totally awesome. We. We like to, um, at Dragon Con, we like to counter-program mm -hmm. the, um, the, what you call it, the, uh, the parade, because a lot of people can't get to it. A lot of people uh, don't want to be outside with 100,000 of their closest friends. And, and it's outside in Georgia in August. in Georgia in August. Now, we are not officially anti-parade. Mm -mm. I enjoy a I enjoy I enjoy a lovely parade, <laughs> especially a parade with cool people in it, like at, at Dragon Con. But uh, in uh, this case, we uh, we want to give the option to people who don't want to go and watch the parade. We want to get we we want to drag those people in to us and say, you know what, guys, bro, you can hang out with us. Mm -hmm. And they did, and they do, and now we are going to show you why they did that um, <laughs> with the permissible mullets of, of classic sci-fi and pop culture and such. And I want to give a hello to everybody watching on the Facebook. Uh, Kyle, who actually says, quote, I love these panels at Dragon Con, and we Thank love you, you at them. Thank you, Kyle. I'm going to check that out. Boom, look at that. And also look at that. 
<laughs> oh, and Matricula is watching. Hi. I have a feeling that a number of people, uh, well, after all this is, is said and done, there are people who are going to be emerging from their caves with mullets. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This yeah. is going to start a whole thing. It's going to be a thing again. Yeah. I, I went opposite. I went nega mullet. Or... Uh, nega mullet? Yeah. All right. Yeah, I dig it. I have elected to just never cut my hair again. Mm -hmm. I'm excited. Yeah, and now you, well, now that you have John Bon Jovi's hair, thank goodness. we discovered two panels ago. Yes, I have. Um, um, we 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 got. Um, I, I I used to be a short hair guy, but now I've decided I want to see what it does <laughs> because I, have, <laughs> I haven't had it long, and it doesn't grow down like a Rick Springfield or anybody oh. like that. It just grows like this. <laughs> Like a Greg Brady. <laughs> so I'm just going to see what it does. Now, I have been um, forbidden Crow -crow. And <laughs> by my wife and child from doing as follows. They're not in the room, so I can do this because I've been forbidden elsewhere in the house. Uh, let me see if I can do this. <laughs> um, Marty, we've got to go back. <laughs> <In the future. laughs> okay. You totally have to cosplay as Doc. Just I'm not allowed to do cosplay. that anywhere else in the house. <laughs> My you, wife you totally said, we, we totally have to put that together. <laughs> My wife said, I guess that makes me know. Marty. <laughs> what? You know, if Marty you do here, Doc. if you do Doc, I gotta be Marty, I guess. Oh yeah. See that or I go Biff, and I don't have the hair for Biff. Nobody has the from Biff. Very cool sidebar, since we're doing those sidebars. They did an online reunion. I, I posted the link. Uh, an online reunion of the Back to the Future cast. And Biff, the guy that played Biff, was not there. And then like halfway through it, somebody calls in, and it's Biff. As <laughs> Biff. Nice. And he's in Biff Makeup and he does Biff with the actors. From oh, Bachelor. that's that's beautiful, that's darling. So, I love yet it. Yet another reason to watch that. I love those things. Mm -hmm. I uh, um uh well not 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 Josh Gad is doing a series apparently mm -hmm. the voice of Olaf, and he's done uh what was the first one? Oh Goonies. And yeah, then, oh, Goonies. Yeah. Oh yeah, I heard about that. So, totally good stuff. If we can get the uh, voice of Olaf to come to Dragon Con, we'll, we'll <laughs> work on that. We'll just put him on all of our panels, too. In the meantime, speaking of mullets, <laughs> I'm just not even going to try to circle back to it. I'm just going to be like, look. Circle, circle back. You got to right. right. hang, hang with us. We, uh, we keep it moving from topic to topic on this thing. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, are you, are, are you, are you ready, Miss Tegan? Yes, yes. Let's do this. Let's do that indeed. Let's All right. Do our, we do. Hey, there. everybody. I literally can't see what else is going on, like if my video is on or anything. So this is going to be fun. It's so I'll just be speaking to the ether. This is great. Mm -hmm. So welcome to Permissible Mullets of Classic Sci-Fi and Fantasy, a hairstyle revisited. All right. Just <laughs> in case you've forgotten the anatomy of a mullet. Business in front, party in back. Thank you, Billy Ray Cyrus. <laughs> All right. We're going to go over some quick history of the mullet. Uh, the uh, mullet has been around. I remember doing research for this. Like, I literally went on some massive wiki dives for, for this presentation <laughs> years ago. And I remember, you know, trying, when did the mullet first begin? And then finding out that the mullet really started, you know, as far as being a hairstyle that people really described was in the sixth century. Um, I'm probably going to mangle this guy's name. I'm sorry. Procopius uh, wrote about a style favored by young men. It was not a particularly popular style as it was non-Roman. Dude called it a honic style. Mm. And uh, it emerged once again in the days of the Wild West. Variations of it were born by such figures as Wild Bill Hickok and Buffalo Bill Cody. Uh, you can see that in Deadwood, mm -hmm. just in case you forgot. All right, guys, now we're going to go toward more modern era. 
the mullet rose to prominence again in the 1970s thanks to celebrities like Rod Stewart, David Bowie, and Paul McCartney. And as uh, as you'll see later, um, the 80s were definitely when this when this style really came to the forefront. Um, and arguably, you could say that it was the Lost Boys that really uh, popularized the style for a new generation in the 1980s. Um, and I always do like the little side note I put in here. The mullet was incredibly popular among lesbians in the 1980s as an easy way to set themselves apart. Um, and then the mullet kind of died down, came back in the 90s when it was worn by a number of musicians and comic book characters. And then after the millennium dawned, uh, the popularity of the mullet waned once again as it was attributed to and associated with stereotypical redneck culture. All right, guys, here's where we get to the meat. There are two, two primary categories of permissible mullets. What The mullet either has to make sense within the context of the media or the bearer of the mullet is just too badass for the hairstyle to be questioned. Now let's get to some examples. All right, guys, we've got Red Sonia. Red Sonia, contextually, she doesn't want the hair all up in her face while she's trying to stab people. So that's why you got the hair cut up front. And then you got to keep like hair long in the back. So it's like, show it, you know, help, you know, kind of try to keep your neck protected. We got, you know, Robin Hood, you know, again, you want to keep the hair out of the face and you're just, you know, trying to look cool. And then, of course, this horse. <laughs> yes. <laughs> This horse. All right, guys. Now we're getting to some badass mullets. All right. Now, my favorite badass mullet on this page. Yes, there are a lot of really amazing mullets from Captain America to He-Man. MacGyver, as Jennifer uh, said, that he was the king of mullets. Um, and, of course, we have our key for Sutherland in the middle. But Aquaman. Now, Aquaman, I give him mad props because dude cut his own hand off to protect his son. Mm -hmm. I mean, you aren't going to argue with that. And nope. of course, yeah, that's yeah. about yeah. that's badassery right there. And then some further badassery. So John yeah. Nada, Mister Rowdy Roddy Piper. <laughs> yeah, he's out and of bubblegum and a hairstylist. <laughs> into it's rock. Yeah, so there we got. And then we have Superman and Snake. So questions. And wait, wait, I, I, could you go back to that previous panel? I thought he was dead. And thank you. <laughs> Good night, everybody. All right, guys. Questions. I'm going to go kill the, the presentation now so I can actually see your shining faces. <laughs> Woohoo! So, yeah, that was my very quick and dirty mullet panel. Well, it, it's definitely a, a dirty look. Um, <laughs> as, you, as you pointed out, it, it was definitely favored by, uh, you know, as someone who grew up in a trailer park, uh, mm -hmm. it was definitely favored by rednecks. And uh, trailer dwelling folk of all mm -hmm. kinds, it um, it's it's an odd situation because uh, the 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 whole mullet thing requires such a delicate hand. There's a lot of work that goes in to a mullet. You got to do stuff back here. You got to do stuff here. You got to do stuff up here. You can't just do nothing. That's not a mullet. Yeah, you have to have some kind of oomph to it because otherwise they'll just kind of flop back and then you're like, what is going on with my life? You know, <laughs> if you're going to, the mullet is a style that you really ought to like commit to. Like if that's what you're going to, it requires a certain amount of maintenance mm -hmm. so it doesn't get super sloppy. Um, <laughs> you know, also shout out Lola. I really appreciate the, uh, what was it? Murder in the front party in the back. Yeah. Thank you. I, I saw that. That was Nine. awesome. Shout out. Props. Let's see. But yeah, it's like is because like you're saying, if if you just go long all the way, it's just hippie. Yeah. Right? Or just someone who decided it was way less expensive to keep your hair long than it was to get a pixie cut re uh, religiously. That would mm -hmm. be me. <laughs> <laughs> um, there was indeed as pointed out by Nerdburger358, there was a sitcom called The Mullets on the UPN. I believe that the mom was played by Lonnie Anderson because perfect, of course. 
Yeah, no, Wait, look, I got it correct from my okay, good, good. <laughs> I uh, didn't even have to Google it. That's it's all up here. It's all up here, guys. That, that's why you're, you're that's why we're in charge, Joe. <laughs> that's when we get paid the big buck. Mm -hmm. That's right. Um yeah, but kind of a it's it's really interesting that it really was kind of like one of the defining hairstyles of the eighties. It's like how you knew a guy was a rebel without him being like too far of a rebel, you know, because he still had the business up top so that you knew he was serious, but he was the party in the back, which let everybody know that, hey, you know, he's not, you know, he, he's the kind of cop who gets yelled at by his boss. <laughs> we did, when the mullets were on people, mm -hmm. pre predominantly in the 80s, when, when that was... The thing, did everybody call it a mullet? Did people, were people like, hey, check out that mullet? Or is it a thing that now people do and go, hey, look at that retro mullet on people? Um, I want to, again, I wasn't really around much in the 80s, so I can't really speak to that specifically. But I think it's one of those retroactively described hairstyles. Like, it was just the style of the time. They didn't really refer to it as such as mullet. Um, but as time has gone by and we have learned and grown as a culture, we <laughs> able to look back and be like, oh yeah, dude had a mullet. Yeah, it, thank you, Lil. It was just hair in the 80s. Um, but again, I, I still think it was it was definitely the Lost Boys that really kind of gave that gave that hairstyle a, a new new vim and verve. because uh, if Kiefer Sutherland didn't look so cool with it, you know, how many people would have worn it as a style? Uh huh, uh -huh. exactly. The yes. um uh, that movie Empire really part. did define cool for a while. Yeah, um, he was. Um, oh gosh, now now the sweaty saxophone dude did not have a mullet. No. He, I believe, just no, had, he had a bandana, didn't he? And I think he had it pulled back into the ponytail. Yeah. Mm. Oh right, yes, he did. Because he's got he's got saxophone in to do, man. He ain't got time to mess with the hair. Exactly. Yeah. yeah there's too much yeah. saxophone. A lot yeah, of oil. It, it, Gotta keep the hair it, out of the way. Yeah, mm -hmm. every minute he every minute he's spending on his hair is not one that he's oiling up. I I discovered to my shame a couple, you know, some weeks ago that it, Joel Schumacher had directed that movie. Mm -hmm. Like I hadn't known that, like I hadn't connected the dots, and then I connected the dots and I was like, Oh, that's why that movie's so gay. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everything falls into place and then centers around a mullet. Yeah. And also speaking of Keith for Sutherland, this is his story, but I'm going to tell it anyway. Ryan Cadaver, who was on with our music panel uh, with his wife, went to Transylvania, I think, two years ago. And they, you know, they were just they did a tour of Europe. And that's one of the places they went. And they went to the Dracula's castle like you do. Yeah, and in the room, one of the rooms where they had like a coffin set up, the poster on the wall was not Bella Lugosi. It was not uh, Christopher Lee. It was Kiefer. <laughs> <laughs> Dracula's people said, we got to get that Lost Boys poster. Yes. <laughs> you know, that, that iconic poster of him like leaning forward, that was in the, in the PowerPoint, yeah. though, giving yeah, you that look. that look. Yeah. yeah. I love it. <laughs> just, you're just chilling out in Dracula's castle, and look, it's the Lost Boys poster. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think you know, speaking as a for, as someone who did survive the '80s, who tried to grow out long hair, mm. the mullet also had a, a a kind of attraction in it was you know it 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 could be low maintenance. You know, you just you got someone to sh shorten the top up for you. And you just ran a brush through it, and, and you know, if and if you were a, a basic bitch like me. You just let it go at that. But if you wanted, like, you could put some volumizer in there. You could do a little bit. It still didn't yeah, take a spray. whole lot. Oh, the, the spray. Mm. <laughs> That's one of the iconic things. You always know when you're watching an 80s movie, when you get the hairspray up in there. Mm. <laughs> ah, the cook in the Chinese restaurant. How do you know you're from the South? The cook in the Chinese restaurant has a mullet. They ask if you want gravy on your fried rice. Yes, I do want gravy on my fried rice. Thank you, Nerdburger358, for that. Ah, so good. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, 
I think one of the most, I mean, as Jennifer Hartstrom pointed out in your comment and in her comment, uh, MacGyver was kind of the king mullet. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you if you were if it, it Tegan, if you had to pick like the or mullet of this is the mullet of all mullets. Mm. I would uh, honestly, after that horse after the after the horse it would it would have to probably be MacGyver because again he 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 wore that you know for so long um and it really became synonymous with this character so much so that when they did the reboot series I was I was upset um that kid ain't got no mullet yeah there's no mullet there's no mullet there's no MacGyver what is what what are your life choices why and uh, uh sidebar uh the new magnum no mustache what? My mom's been watching the old Magnum, and I never realized how short his shorts were. <laughs> things, things you learn. Thank you, eighties. <laughs> uh, we have another question from a viewer, Alicia. Hi, Alicia. Uh, she would like to ask, what are the units for a mullet rating scale? Mm. Oh, I would say um, you want to do one to ten. Uh, but it's just so in my other PowerPoint presentation, we go to a number of different varieties of mullets. Mm-hmm. So it really depends on like, again, the context of the mullet, you know, like what mullet in particular they're sporting. Cause there are different, different types. Um, there's just a whole lot of granularity there that you need to explore <laughs> and figure out um, what, what you're ranking. Mm-hmm. Well, do you want to run through the second presentation, or do you want to save that for a second mullet well, I don't panel? Know if we, well, we're only like twenty or so minutes in. Mm-hmm. Um, so, do you guys think we would have enough with with just that one PowerPoint presentation, or do we want to go into the other PowerPoint presentation? Let's just do a full granny. Let's just do do the whole the thing? Yeah. thing. Yeah. All let's, right. Let's mullet it out. Let's mullet it out, guys. You're ready for some more PowerPoint. Yes. <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> Look at that. Fantastic bullets of classic sci-fi, aka Bullet Panel Two: The Remulleting. Permissible mullets. Further exploration. They're letting Tegan lead a discussion about mullets again. May I <laughs> offer you praise if I didn't do it before that you used the Buffy font on. <laughs> I just, I, it's one of those things when I had to make a PowerPoint, because I see a lot of PowerPoints at work. Um, I had to make a PowerPoint and I'm like, I'm going to do some really ridiculous things with fonts. And uh, <laughs> this is what we've got. All right, guys, it. we're going to do a quick recap. Remember, recap, we already got the anatomy, business front, party, and back. We already went through history. We've already went through the permissible mullets. So back again, contextual mullet examples. We got Obi-Wan Kenobi up in here because which is really appropriate because I've been reading a lot of Star Wars fanfic this week. So <laughs> this just works out really well. We got badass mullet examples again. Can't forget these guys. This horse. Uh, ah. <laughs> I love that I gave him his own slide. Yes. Good job, horse. <laughs> All right. I discovered uh, in researching this panel uh, that there were, that mullets were a type of fish. So here, oh. that is a mullet. All right, guys. I'll wear that on my head. <laughs> bullet varieties and where to find them. The skullet. Bald <laughs> on top, long and back. This is uh, long and back. So uh, this one, uh, everyone will recognize from Londo Malari in Babylon 5. That counts as a skullet. <laughs> the bullet, which is a bowl cut plus a mullet. Not a whole lot of, uh, of classic sci-fi examples there. I did find Jane Fonda sporting it in a movie called Clute. If you, if you had... <laughs> 30 minutes in would be the first minute when we time we referenced Clute. And you are tonight's winner. Please collect your winnings at the front. All right, guys. Let's go to the Mulhawk, which we got a little bit of key. Yes. Keeper kind of was sporting a bit of a Mulhawk there. That's when a mullet and Mohawk love each other very much. A Mulhawk happens. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I, I forgot. I didn't even look at this presentation before I pulled it up again. So this is this is exciting for me. <laughs> All right, guys, the femme mullet, which honestly I don't really, uh, really feel this. In hindsight, that just doesn't need to necessarily be its own category. But some people think it needs to be its own category. Again, it's a mullet worn by a woman. Um, again, it's actually kind of boring that it's considered a subcategory. Thanks, me. I'm smart. 
<laughs> and then the magical mullet. Oh. I just wanted to remember David Bowie. Mm. <sighs> but mm. honestly, I'm kind of into making magical mullet a thing now because so many fairy and elf characters and stuff wear mullets. I feel like they're allowed to have their own subcategory. But I'm I'm okay with with you know having that be debated. And you're welcome. <laughs> <I didn't. laughs> well the 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 uh the the mullet for for good or ill may be coming back now because of the tiger king yeah that's oh, the yeah. Pre tiger king thing and i i kind of refuse to watch that show on principle good call good call yeah it's but the uh, I, I say let's separate mullets from the Tiger King, and if you want to bring your mullet back, you go ahead. Just don't shoot tigers. Well, and don't, yeah, yeah. Don't shoot tigers and Let don't make it multicolored. Uh, yeah. Go ahead, Gary. Yeah, don't shoot tigers and don't make it multicolored because that's the weird thing about his mullet is it's like a different color up here and then. Yeah, what was that? What the heck? Redneck. That's redneck. <laughs> and he's in Oklahoma. As soon as he thought, as soon as he appeared on the screen, my first thought, not knowing anything about the backstory or anything, I thought, I think he must be from Alabama. He <laughs> must be from my home state. Turns out he was not. And surprised. Color me surprised. Well, now that's one less thing Alabama has to worry about claiming. One yes. less thing. <laughs> yeah, I think a redneck from Oklahoma is technically called a shit kicker. <laughs> <laughs> People yeah. from Oklahoma, you're welcome to correct us. Yes. We we love Oklahoma. I also it's lived there for a spell. Where the I wind was... comes sweeping down the plane. Yes. It did. <laughs> there, there are no trees in Oklahoma. Let's see. Oh, my gosh. I... um. I feel like we need to give a special comp special dispensation to Patrick Swayze. Yes. Yeah. Who did he have short hair in anything? I think he had the Patrick Swayze hair in everything. He did a cop show where he did short hair. Yes. So that was near the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was yeah, but he was on a TV series. When he became sick, yeah, I believe, but but yeah, okay. Well, he was, but during the height of the mullet era, Swayze, 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 he was all over it, yeah, even in period pieces such as Dirty Dancing, where the mullet had not become a thing yet, in yeah, New that, England that period. In the 50s. yeah, but I I'll think he definitely was, was uh, historically in that time period, you know, the dudes would have had more of a clean cut hairstyle. So having his long kind of, you know, wild locks definitely kind of set him apart from everyone thought, you know, was a, a, mm -hmm. a cool, a, a nice, a nice boy that you'd take home to, to mom. That's right. He was not a nice boy mm -hmm. because of the dirty dance. Yes. Uh, which Had he been a nice boy, they would have just called it perfectly acceptable dancing. <laughs> um, yeah, it, 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 his hair was a little shorter in, it was still longer in the back than it should have been in Dirty Dancing, but it did grow <laughs> on, as uh, Nerdburger points out, to full-on mullet by Roadhouse. Roadhouse. Yeah, and I honestly don't remember particularly what his hair was like in Tu Wong Fu, thanks to everything Julie Newmar, because it was mostly wigs. Mostly wigs. Sure. sure. That movie is amazing. If you've never yes, watched it, you were please. doing yourself a terrible disservice. Yeah. <laughs> do it. You need to do a double feature of that and um, uh, Priscilla uh, Queen of the Desert. Priscilla Queen of the Desert, yes. <laughs> I was going to say Roadhouse. <laughs> Roadhouse, <laughs> then Tu Wong Fu. Tu Wong Fu, thanks to everything Julie Newmar. I... Or also also, uh, also allowable blade and then to Wong Fu. <laughs> Thanks for everything. Now Chris Christopherson in Blade is rocking. Is he rocking a mullet? Because it's a little longer up top. 
Is like mean, how long is it? What would you say is like? Is there a certain follicle length that it's like, I feel like mullet, it's mullet, 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 now it's hair. I feel like it's more of a ratio thing mm-hmm. between the the length, the party in the front, and the and the you know, the business in front, party in back. There has to be a certain ratio of of length, business, business, to party. business right. to party. Like, so the more party, the more business you're. Allowed. Yeah, the more like if yeah, it's. Like I'm, if you have a mullet that goes to here, your your business is allowed to be longer. But if you've got a yeah. short mullet, you need serious yeah. business. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, other again, it comes back to a commitment. How committed are you going to be to to that style? Mm. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. The um. The there was a consternation from our supermanologist Michael Bailey when we did this live over whether Superman during that awkward period in the nineties had a mullet or not. He claims not, but well, look. he's come around. Well, he's he's come around to it because okay. I think his main, his main concern was whether or not we would hold the mullet against Superman. No. As, he, as a supermanologist, he, he received a lot of crap from people about Superman <laughs> and his mullet. And that was, so that, that was just making him, you know, concerned about how we would, deal with his his beloved hero and you know as i said superman's mullet was badass because you are not going to tell superman his haircut sucks no no mm. no the only concern i have about superman's mullet sorry michael you're probably gonna be watching this later and i'm going to apologize but it was the jerry carl that really oh yes like, was because I, <laughs> because I feel like superman's hair should be straight so I'm just making that. That's a very awkward artistic choice. <laughs> now that you say it, oh my gosh! You can't unsee it. <laughs> it started with a simple that little S curl, little and then S it was curl. just like Jerry curl. <laughs> <laughs> because his like his hair up until then had just just that one artistic curl, like Mulan with a one strand of hair, or Bella with a one strand of hair. It's a very like princess style, right? Mm-hmm. But then it just went full on Jerry curl with a mullet. And you're like, does he flat iron his hair? Does he put a lot of product in it to slick it back? Because his hair is a certain length that you'd be able to tell if it had curls in it or not. So yes. the the so dude just came back from the dead. So he had been storing up solar energy in the Fortress of Solitude, and he was main t- he was tended to by a robot. Mm-hmm. So the robot must have done his hair at some point. <laughs> yeah, no, because I've had friends who, who've gone through some major medical stuff and their hair texture changes. Mm. Um, you know, especially when you go through cancer and your hair is growing back out, your texture changes. So was well, maybe that might have factored into why Superman went from, you know, being like dead to Jerry Curl. <laughs> uh, that's totally totally plausible but then well, like yeah, very when the mullet was abandoned so were his curls mm. so was yes. were the curls mullet dependent yes <laughs> yes gosh i wish michael bailey was here <laughs> me too we, we're gonna get him on one of these we're gonna you're get coming him on one bailey we'll, we're, we'll we're coming it. for you bailey we're coming we'll do for a you. mullet sidebar <laughs> when we get him involved um Another criticism of Superman, since Michael Bailey's not here, during that time, <laughs> during that time period when he had the Jerry curl up top, when he was Clark Kent, mm-hmm. he slicked it back and pulled it back into a ponytail, which I was outraged by. <laughs> let it, let it go free, Superman. Mm-hmm. Free the mullet. Free the mullet, Superman. Has, but, uh, people watching at home, hashtag, hashtag free, the mullet. free the mullet. Hashtag free the mullet. <laughs> so he lets it he lets it go free when he's saving the day as Superman. But when he's back in his mild mannered reporter phase, he's like, now, now I have it slicked back with a ponytail. That means I'm an asshole. But, yes. <laughs> look, yes. If it's like a, a, a short ponytail. ponytail. I'm a jerk. Mm-hmm. There, there is definitely a, a a sign of jerkitude when you can see that the, the hair is thinning, so they start growing longer ponytail in the back to try to compensate. And I was like, "That's that bet that guy's a jerk." No, well, I have I have friends who do this, and I I'm gonna just defend them because a lot mm-hmm. of my friends who do this are aren't jerks. 
But I can see, but if you're looking in 80s styles and stuff, that was mm. like one of the symbols of jerkitude in, in 80s movies with the thinning hair and the pony to the tiny ponytail. So I just had a weird, weird sidebar thought about hair length and coolness of characters. Mm -hmm. So uh, in the Highlander TV show, um, one of the things I remarked upon in my Facebook memories, you know, a couple of weeks ago was the last season became terrible because Duncan had cut his hair short. <gasps> And I feel like there's a weird, like, Samson and Delilah-like aspect to hair length and quality of things. Mm. <laughs> you know? So we said, I... again, it goes back to Superman, you know? Again, you know, I'm not... I never read that run of Superman. Uh, but, gosh, the fact that he slipped his hair back and put it into a little ponytail, I'm just like, nah. Nah, dude. Nah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you, Nerd Burger. <laughs> Vigo the Carpathian had a mullet too. Yeah. And that was an ancient mullet. That was a that was a that was a, a definitely a historical mullet. Historical. And the only reason it wouldn't call fall on the permissible stale is because <clears throat> he was an asshole. Yeah. Yeah, we and I do think we have to kind of point that out. Is, is part of this panel is permissible mullets. Like the Superman that you know, when Bailey I think chilled out when we, he realized we weren't gonna berate Superman over his mullet choices because well one, who's gonna berate Superman? Uh if you're and two, you know, we were saying, you know, it works. There are people that the mullet works on and then there are the people that it doesn't. And I think that's the key. <laughs> yeah, again, so Vigo the Carpathian is not does not have a permissible mullet because he's like a gigantic baby stealing jerk. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, get a haircut, dude. You, you, <laughs> you fucking hippie. You, get a haircut. You. <laughs> uh, that reminds me, it's like the whole, I, I wonder how much of the mullet code did come out as a societal thing because, you know, I saw one comedian has put it one time, you know, in hair in the 50s, it was very neat. You know, you had very neat hair. And then the 60s, the hippies, it became messy as a rebellion against the 50s. And then in the 70s, when the mullet really kind of started to, to ease into society, you know, the 70s hairstyles were neatly messy. You know, it was all, yeah. it had to be blown a certain way. It kind of, you know, like Ziggy Stardust. He had a, you know, again, you yeah. know, David Bowie, that, David that Bowie look was kind of. And uh, I want to go back to something for just a second with this, the following comment. The robot went to Cosmetology. <laughs> What else is it going to do? It's just hanging out in the Fortress of Solitude all day. If he can, he can do a, a correspondence. Sure, like, yeah. There's only so many times it can beat Deep Blue at chess. Kryptonian YouTube tutorials? <laughs> oh, now I want to see that. I want Superman's robot pal watching YouTube. Kryptonian YouTube. Both. Okay. <laughs> Yo, Superman's lucky he didn't come out with like a with like eyeshadow. <laughs> awful awful and face of makeup. I mean... I would kill for that. That would be amazing. Surely. <laughs> like, Imagine what did you do to my face? Look, you were asleep. I was bored. It was contour. Contouring will be a better disguise than glasses. Imagine, <laughs> imagine all the... And you, you know how... It well, went, considering like, in the first season of Arrow, that was his mask. Was He contour, was just smearing yeah, on. Go. Yeah. You know, the... the, the uh, Imagine, you know how you experiment with things when you're watching YouTube videos, learning how to do stuff. Imagine all the hairstyles that he tried to put on Superman <laughs> while he's sitting there in the Kryptonian coffin, okay. charging back up. So we're kind of imagining that sort of Beauty and the Beast cartoon moment where he's trying on all the different, like he's got the really thick curls, like he's doing all over Coco with it. Yes. <laughs> now, now I want someone to draw a Superman, but he's bald, like Lex Luthor. And then you can draw your own Superman hair. Come on. <laughs> Internet, make that happen. I just want to see him in the Rococo design now with the big curls, like the big wing type curls. Like, I just, I need to see this now. Internet, make it happen. Please. <laughs> Michael Bailey, we're sorry. We're so, so sorry. That's what we're here for, guys. <laughs> we're here. Ah, I love it. Thank you, guys. We, we, we have, there's a bazillion things we can do. Um, on on the interwebs to keep this thing going. And so that's what we're going to do. We have 
Gary and I, and I think Tegan also, we've got like, we've only got like 83 other ideas for these things. And um, eventually we'll get to them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so would you say that the mullet is a hairstyle that should return to popularity or should it stay like a niche hairstyle? Like, oh, okay, that's an 80s look. I'm going to mullet it out. I don't what know. Do you think, you Tegan? Can, yeah, go ahead. It's one of those things, again, it really depends on who's wearing them. Mm -hmm. You know, again, there's a lot of baggage attached to the mullet. And especially now with Tiger King, there's going to be another another layer of baggage attached. Um, so a part of me wants the mullet to regain some semblance of popularity. Um, only so that, like, you can kind of get rid of some of that baggage, like throw it off the train and just keep mm -hmm. keep chugging along. Well, on the other hand, it's like, can you really live up to those badass and contextual mullet examples? You know, can you can you really embrace permissible mulletness? If, uh, yeah, if you, uh, I feel like, can you do? Well, my, my question is today: Could you do a mullet in an unironic fashion? In an unironic way that doesn't say I'm wink wink I'm flashing back to the 80s or I'm pretending to be a, uh, a metal guy from 1986 or Patrick Swayze how can you could you could anyone walk around with a mullet today without us going clearly you're doing it for funsies or can I, is, is there, is there a, a case for a serious mullet wearer in 2020? I think it really depends on the attitude. Like if you can walk around and be like, yeah, it's my mullet. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I'm walking down the street with utter confidence. Like if you can get like the Bucky Barnes murder strut down the street <laughs> with your mullet, <laughs> like, yes, you can do it because really so really, so the anatomy of the mullet is is business in front, party in back. Mm -hmm. But the unsaid, unspoken, uncelebrated element of mullet wearing is the attitude of the mullet wearer. Indeed. <laughs> would you say, and I always mix them up because I don't watch the shows as much as, as I do, but would you say that Winchester boy is sporting a modern mullet? Hmm. I can't remember oh. if it's Sam or Dean. I forget which uh, one. That would be which. Sam. Dean's hair has never really changed. I mm -hmm. I don't want to get any to discussions about the Winchesters because I have discovered on the internet that way lies madness. Ah. Uh, um, but no, oh, yeah. the in in what I remember watching the show because I've, I've watched a number of seasons. One of those shows that I can't watch in the dark um, because <laughs> sometimes I get spooked out. Um, but uh, it's one of those things like, again, it came down to the ratio of of business versus party and mm -hmm. the business and like his party was it just he never really achieved mullet status, which is probably for the best. <laughs> <laughs> so and, and, and I'm trying to think of if there are any other modern mullet wearers that are out there that aren't like joke characters and, and I'm, I'm pulling up blanks. Ah, interesting trivia from Lola. There was a uh, uh, Jared Padalecki played, I guess, young MacGyver in a pilot back in the 90s. Oh, my gosh. Oh. He was destined to uh, do a mullet tribute. To pass the mullet crown, yes. Pass the, literal, pass, <laughs> the, uh, pass the mullet crown. Um, gosh, hmm. I'm still thinking about modern mullets. Um. Yeah, because it seems now that the the mullet, since it has kind of fallen out of fashion, it's guys either have the long hair, or it's all you know proper business. Mm. Yeah, it's yeah, and they don't really kind of mix the two that much. I gotta say, I uh, in a way. I miss the mullet, and in another way, I never want to see it again, ever. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, thanks, Nerdburger. Apparently, some South American soccer players wear them. Nice. Ah. Which, again, is a contextual mullet example. Of course. Yeah. 
Now, uh, I, my issue with that would be you're going to get super sweaty. I know. Running for four hours in a soccer game. That thing's going to get gross. Yeah. Like the, 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 the party in the back is going to be <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> It's going to be a disgusting, sweaty party <laughs> after like 30 minutes of running. Everybody runs over here, and now everybody runs over there for like yeah. six hours. Yeah, yeah, and nine times out of the ten, a sweaty party is a bad party. That's Well, maybe that's eight perfect. times out of ten. could be eight. seven. It depends on what you're doing. Hmm, 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 hmm. Yes, I agree. I am sorry. I'm still racking my brain about modern mullet wearers, and it's I know at some point, like, I'm going to sleep, wake up in the middle of the night and be like, it's that guy! <laughs> and, um, yeah, no, I got nothing right now. Oh, and Lola found the pilot for that <laughs> um, MacGyver the, with Jared Palacki. Yeah, we got a... That's awesome. I'm going to have to check that out. Uh, we, we always... Uh, I'm going to post that in it, the Facebook chat. And whenever we do this, we come up with things that you need to check out after our quarantine panel is over. Last week, it was the Scrooge McDuck concert. Did you guys panel. listen to that? Please I tell me. I did. Isn't it like, sorry, just so good. Yes. So good. <laughs> sorry, I just needed to know this. No, it, <laughs> it's, it's, it's so good that um, I dug the following thing out. Yeah, Y'all talk amongst yourselves. Oh, God, he's rolling off again. So uh, I ended up, because of this mullet panel I did, my, I think my dad got me like a weird little coffee table book about mullets. Nice. <laughs> I do kind of like it's become a thing you're identified with. Now. Yeah, and it's like, I, I just, it was just a, a fun thing we did. And now it's like, I, I know mullets. It's just what I do. It's... Yo! Oh, noise. I dug these out, and they are delightful. Yes. Are those nice. in the collar banks era? Yes, highly That's recommended. Stuff. They they reprint these in uh, graphic novel collections now, and these are. Okay, wait a minute, uh, very, put Uncle Scrooge there closer Scrooge to the camera so we can take a look a at mullet, it. But it's not really be up, 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 up a little, Joe. Yeah, there we go. Look at that. It's 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 his whiskers. Like if he had, it's like if he had mutton chops. Those are his mutton uh, chops. Oh yeah, yeah, I wouldn't know yeah, anything about. I can see. Chop, like yeah. I thought about that for a hot second, but no, this is mutton chops. It really fits in his Scottish aesthetic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, totally ah. does. <laughs> <laughs> it totally does. I love it. Uh, oh, and I'm I'm very. I, I haven't read this issue yet, but here he is hugging a chicken. Oh, it looks like a chicken that lays golden eggs. That makes sense. Yeah, damn straight. <laughs> yep. Uh, see, it was it, it, see, it was actually a chicken. That the goose thing was to throw people off. <laughs> <laughs> We're covering all the bases tonight, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. We uh, we don't just want to give you one topic. <laughs> we don't. We, we want to give you like seven. We. <laughs> we, 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 we <laughs> You get the deluxe set when you come on to the quarantine panel at the American Sci-Fi Classics track. So, you guys, what? Oh, are... um, yeah. Nerdburger points out Iron Man had a mullet in the UPN cartoon, yeah. but that reminds me, does Thor have a mullet? I think Thor just has long, godly hair. It wouldn't yeah. surprise me if at some point Thor did rock a mullet, at oh, which sure. point it'd be a badass mullet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, cause because when he first did. shows up, he's got the the like the the longy. Yeah, yeah. When he first shows up in the MCU films, he's got the long hair, um, long styled hair. Long yeah, hair. in the comics, he just has helmet hair for decades. I remember when I first saw a Thor comic where he took off the helmet. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa what's happening? <laughs> But but uh, yeah, I'm, I re I why did I forget the uh, Iron Man with a mullet in the '90s cartoon? Because that was a that was an animated mullet. And however, kind of a transitional period. However, it didn't go anywhere. <laughs> okay, I, I'm posting this in the chat, Joe. You need to throw this up. I'm putting it in the Facebook uh, s that was found. Um, Lola found this image. That you guys need to see a possible Thor haircut that someone obviously did a Photoshop of. That that's just ah. 
Wow. <laughs> That's a look. That is a look. I love it. Everybody go to that link. <laughs> I'm gonna go back to the uh, and it popped into my head now that we're talking about like 90s cartoons Goliath from Gargoyles. What? Oh yeah. Goliath from Gargoyles. A... Yeah, if you're looking at it, because you you can look at it because I've been I'm looking at pictures right now. Mm -hmm. You could say that he possibly has a mullet, but it's hard to tell if it's a mullet or if his hair is just long. However, if Goliath did have a mullet. Again, permissible mullet because he's Goliath and you're not going to tell him his haircut sucks. Yeah, that is a, a badass mullet. That is a badass mullet. Goliath from Gargoyles. I'm looking for... Oh, dead. Oh, I almost had a sod. Oh, that's pretty good. Looking for kind of Oh, yeah, he definitely leg. did have a mullet when Demona turned him human. Yes. Yeah. <sighs> Gosh. I need to do a rewatch of that. I'm in the middle of so many rewatches, though. Mm -hmm. Mullets, I will say, are, are a little more common in the Star Wars universe. Uh, now that I've been doing a rewatch of a lot of Star Wars stuff, uh, yeah. mullets do do get around there. It's a weird yeah. space hairstyle. Yeah, Obi Wan has one. Um, Anakin sort of rocks one in the third movie, although that's more long hair. Yeah, again, the the business to party ratio. Mm hmm. <laughs> Those are very important important factors to bear in mind if you're trying to judge whether or not something is a mullet. Would you say Mace Windu has an invisible mullet and that's why he's a badass? Dude, Mace Windu is Samuel L. Jackson with a purple lightsaber, man. He was just badass to begin with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The uh, the mullet was... and uh, But uh, I believe that Yoda would have a skullet, if you will, because yeah. he had the I could imagine, around yeah. the... I mean, if... Picard grew his hair out in Star Trek The Next Generation. Yeah. If he'd grown it out, he could have rocked a, a pretty killer pretty, yeah, pretty uh, Babylon 5 skull, uh, skull it, So <laughs> That's a really terrifying thought. I'm sorry I yeah. gave that to you, Internet. <laughs> yeah, and, and if you want to see look something <laughs> really wild, look for it. They, they're out there now. The, the test photos before Next Gen started uh, where they put him in the wig. Yeah, they were gonna put him in the wig, and then he was like, and then they were like, you know what? No, this is the future. No one gives a crap if he's bald. Mm -hmm. But he looks so weird with hair. He does. <laughs> oh my gosh. Nick Cage has definitely sported mullets. Oh my god. Yeah, well, yeah. But are they permissible? I would say none of them are permissible. I would say none of them are permissible. I mean, it's, hair. I mean, it's Nick yeah. Cage. I mean, no. Even, con hair. Con ah. hair. <laughs> but no, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, con hair. But mm -hmm. he, he was, he did upside down push ups. Did, no, he didn't have a, oddly enough, mullet in con air, no mullet when he plays a traditionally mulleted character in Raising Arizona. That's true. Yeah. That, that is prime mullet country there. <laughs> that country was, uh, that area was uh, not a rocky place where the mullet could find no purchase. <laughs> and, and again, Nerd Burger bringing the realness, test footage of Jordy with his visor where he was wearing the Jerry Curl mullet. Guys, you are getting such... Thank you for those those deep dives into mullet history of, of pop culture. I appreciate it. You guys, we 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 don't mess around in <laughs> this footage of Jordy's visor, Jerry Curl and a mullet. I love it. Can we just do like uh six hour panels from here on out? Sure. <laughs> I feel like we're gonna have to. But we are we're um somehow <laughs> we well there was only three of us. We had yeah. like six of us and we were doing an hour and twenty minutes last time. But uh I um again, as we've said in previous um quarantine panels, we don't know yet what's gonna happen with uh our Dragon Con situation. Um we are gonna be the kings of wishful thinking until such time as we, we aren't, exactly. 
And uh, we are going to have to do a uh, karaoke performance of that song at some point. Yes. <laughs> uh, but I, 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 I love doing this once a week or whenever we do it or once a day if we have to. If we have to, we'll do it. Um, just to give you guys a break from scrolling through politics because, ugh, why? Yeah. I, I would much that? rather talk about uh, Red Sonia's hair than, <laughs> than. Indeed. So, yes, we are um, super happy to be able to do this with you guys and for you guys. And we're going to keep doing that. Yep. Damn it. But in the, uh, before we get before we get out of here, let's go through uh, where can people find each of you upon the interwebs? Let's start with Mr. Gary Mitchell. Uh, oh. You can find yeah. good Lord, my finger. <laughs> you can find me right there on the Twitter. <laughs> oh, there we go. I like it. Me and Tegan <laughs> both doing it. There we go. So that is me on the Twitters. Uh, you can find me on the Facebook under my real name. Uh, and uh, it's not all politics. It's just a lot of it. <laughs> and you can also find me on the uh, slipped discs uh, weekly article series where I tell you what's coming out on physical media. Like this week, we had Harley Quinn, Birds of Prey, and look at that! Mm. She's got the sandwich. She's got the sandwich. <laughs> I, mm. I am so glad I got this steel book. Nice. Uh, nice. So every week, I let you know what's coming home. Physical dead gum media, Mr. Gary yes. Mitchell. Yep. All right, Some guys. People- some people's fur it. Some people again it. I say we're fur it. That physical media stuff. I Take heard it. A couple of weeks ago. And I've been using it. I recycle. Uh, again, Sharpie on paper. You Yay. can find me on Twitter at artful underscore username. You can find me on Tumblr at artful username. Shout out to my beloved Washington Metropolitan Gamer Symphony Orchestra at WMGSO.org. Everyone stay safe and enjoy the Tigger. Yay! <laughs> they bounce. Yes. You know, um, now I really, I, I, I do and I don't want to see someone do Tigger King. I'm pretty sure it's already been done. I think I already saw it's, it. It probably has been done. But yeah, and you can find me all over the internet. And if you track me down on the book of faces, uh, you can go ahead and friend me. I post randomly. Mm-hmm. That's what I got. And uh, let's see, I'm on the Twitters and the Instagrams at, let me see if I can do it to my own self, right there, Yojo Crow. Yojo I'm Crow. Just, Look. This is so confusing. We're kind yes. of doing it. Here, I got We're it. We're doing it live. Yes. <laughs> Look at that. Uh, um, Yojo Crow. And you can find all of us uh, collectively at Facebook.com. Well, you know what? If you're watching this right now live, you're already here. Guys, you made it. Yes. <laughs> you made it. Don't go anywhere else. Nope. Facebook.com oh. slash group slash American Sci-Fi Classics. On the Instagrams, we are at Sci-Fi Classic Track. And on the Twitters, we are at just Classic Track. Yes. Just classic Track. But and Alan are. throws out the last three examples: Gambit, Bishop, and Longshot from the X Men. All mullets. Oh my gosh, Longshot Gambit. mullets. Mm, Gambit. Sorry, I'll yeah. just... <laughs> and, Gambit. and why did Gambit, even though he had such a great mullet, why did he spoil the mullet with that face mask, the forehead coverage? Joe, um, it was the '90s, and there were a lot of poor fashion choices. Hmm. Also, you could say that he was trying to uh, mimic playing card aesthetic. Oh. Uh, See, that's why she's here. Thank goodness, because I would have just shamed the costume choices of Gambit himself for no good reason. Gambit doesn't deserve that treatment. No, yeah. no, he doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> years with a girlfriend that he couldn't touch. They're married now, I believe, in the comics. So good for them. Yay. I just always assumed they resorted to the full body condoms like in Lethal Weapon. Yeah. No, it wasn't, no, it wasn't Lethal Weapon. It was 
I'm sorry, I got up at like 5.30 this morning. Um, naked gun. Loaded weapon? Oh, naked, no, gun. naked gun. Naked gun. Naked gun. Leslie Nielsen. Sorry. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Those full body. That. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Awkward. <laughs> oh, so good. So well, we good. we always like to end on a note of awkward. <laughs> yeah, that's how that's that's how you know we're taking it down. We're <laughs> we're, we're we're sliding into home plate with a little touch of awkwardness, <laughs> Like a little. The, the, there's a reason it's damn it, Joe. <laughs> damn it, Joe. <laughs> Very excited. Uh, last year, um, you put me in charge of making the damn it, Joe buttons. Mine were very small, but the yes. the uh, the the Gary Gary no buttons very large. Y'all wait right here. I'll show you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Rogue did have a lady quasi mullet in the '90s cartoon. That's true. Oh yeah. But again, it was mostly a uh, hairspray thing. So, but again, business in front, party in back. The ratio. She just had 90s hair. It was actually that late 80s into 90s hair with the teased up and the hairspray and everything. I mean, you know, those beehive B52s. Yeah, it's not like the that. Yeah, it was just a lot of curl, a lot of body, a lot of volume to give her kind of a more heroic presence. Yeah. Wow. It's like when, it, when it comes to lady X Men hair, I always like Storm's Mohawk the best, yeah. I think. Damn. Yeah. Yeah, because Jean Grey also had the the voluminous hair. Well, oh. I stand corrected. Apparently, I've given away all of my "Damn It, Joe" and Gary No buttons. However, oh. I still have some of my uh, yes. classic Trek logo buttons. You, you have to put it in front of the camera, Joe. <laughs> You'll have to forgive Joe. He's a guy of a certain age. Yes. Joe dies. I'm in charge. <laughs> I'm coming. I'm coming. <laughs> another dated reference. I was trying not to do that. We are nothing but dated references, Joe. Come on. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. The dated references track with American Sci-Fi Classics. The American dated references track. Yes. Re the dated references are the best references. That's what I'm saying. As long as we're dated, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, this one created by our friend Deanna Toxopius, the friend of Manimal Button. Oh. And of course, Animal. of course, I have one. Of course, yeah. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Everybody says, boo -hoo, man. <laughs> <laughs> and this okay, is okay, though. We still love you. Hey, thanks. And this is one of my favorite buttons by our friend Beck Pano, who uh, created. Uh, you know what? I stand corrected. Actually, Mike Faber from Earth Station One created this button. I survived the Star Wars holiday special. I didn't get one of those, and I lived through that. You did. All right, I'm saving this one for you, Misty. <laughs> Noise. Hey, I did not because I paid my twenty and got out when it started. <laughs> right. Like a smart person. Like, boom, twenty bucks, and Gary was out of there. Loved. Right. Yeah, I will always love Mike uh, uh, Michael Faulkner coming up to me afterwards, going, "I heard it was bad." I didn't expect it to be that bad. I'm like, I warned you, buddy. I warned you. <laughs> Look, and then this poor man, uh, Michael Faulkner, subjected himself to macking me like two years later. Yes. That's, that's not on us. That's well, on him. He had himself. He only had himself to blame. <laughs> and macking me. Also, you can blame <laughs> macking me. Yes. Or the McDonald's Corporation. <laughs> you could also blame them. Guys, thank you very much. Tegan, Gary, more fun than any normal human should be allowed. That's the kind of fun we have at the American Sci-Fi Classics track. Yes. Here's the thing. Don't uh, come come back and hang out with us. Don't be a stick in the mud. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> yep, uh, we will be back next Thursday. Uh, our topic is going to be uh, Sci Fighters. We're doing a variation mm -hmm. on Sci Fighters. And we are going to be joined for the first time ever 
making her first Dragon Con Classic Trek appearance, Miss Deanna Toxopius. Yay! She's our longtime friend on our website, Revolution SF, but she's up in Canada somewhere, and she can't. She just can't drive down to the Georgia area. Yeah. Uh, they haven't gotten the Georgia to um, Canada Canal finished yet. Yes. When that happens every year, she'll be here. But in the meantime, we are going to get this wonderful person on our quarantine panel uh, with us, just like all the other wonderful people who are joining us this week, who joined us the previous weeks. Yes. You guys are the best. You're a member of of the American Sci-Fi Classics Track group, and that makes you... American Sci-Fi Classics Track family. Family. Because we're going to hit you up for money at some point. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that, that's coming. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> that's 100% coming. And it's going to be at the worst possible time. Because <laughs> that's family. <laughs> the most uncomfortable time. Is, uh, like, well, by the way, you wouldn't happen to have like 7,000 bucks laying mm. around, would you? We got to pay off some hotel rooms. <laughs> <laughs> these are true facts ladies and gentlemen so join us next time when you will hear Gary Mitchell say I'm not wearing pants Deanna <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys thanks so much guys thank you